Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we got another couple days, you know, we're on the last week before Christmas, so we got to get moving here, a lot of things to do. I just wanted to go over a, a tool lot that I bought a couple months ago on eBay. I think you might enjoy some of the stuff I picked up. Let's get right to it. Okay, for starting off today, I just wanted to show you something I was really proud that I picked up on eBay a couple months ago. Um, this was a lot. Uh, and, and I told you that on eBay, there are good deals to be had, if, especially if you buy in lots. You have to look on the lot. And um, again, I stopped buying tools, but this just caught my eye. And sometimes they have certain tools in there you might want one or two of, but the price is so low. So I won this lot for $10. And again, it was about... 850 or something shipping it came up to $21 with tax and shipping and everything so $21 but for me personally for some of you maybe you say well I don't need any of that but let me show you why this was such a fantastic deal for me first of all uh let me break down some of what we have here and why this is such a fantastic what I thought was such a great deal you know Nicholson files all right so always nice files but you see this file here this particular file, if you look closely, it's a regular squared file, right? But on one side has a safety edge. Now that safety edge is a beautiful thing to have on some of your files. And years ago, if you didn't have a safety file, and that's why this is red over here, probably to identify it. But if you didn't have a safety file, some guys would make it. They would run this along the, the sanding belt and make it smooth. And I'll show you why this is such a beautiful file. A safety edge is so nice now, to have. Many times you'll have to file something. Let's say I needed to file this area over here. But this is, I didn't want to touch this area here. This is, let's say, we wanted to keep this pristine. So you take the safety edge of your file, the, the smooth side, you rest it against here, and then you could file all the way up to the bottom here without uh, touching this section here. So that's where a safety edge on, you should have some files with a safety edge. It makes, if you try and do this, you know, without touching it, unless you put a blocker there or something, and then you're gonna have a gap. So really comes in handy. So that was right off the bat. That's a nice thing to Next have. Next up, you know, I'm a collector of locks, a master number one, can't have enough of those. Stanley 199. This is always fun to play with. And, uh, and especially uh, now you have to always be careful when you're buying a used knife. You always have to look at the front here. A lot of these times these are worn and you can see here, there's a little chip out of here, but this is a great knife if you want to customize and you didn't have to worry because once that chip is out of there, you know, you'll fill that in with JB Weld and then you can do whatever you want with it. So, uh, believe it or not, what, how I found this, I was searching for this and this is a vice grip five. You see that five WR that has a curved jaw. Now I have the 10, the seven, I never had a five and this is the original Peterson style fantastic right again well worth this alone was worth the price of uh pretty much everything uh this is a craftsman nut breaker now if you've never seen one of these before sometimes you'll have a uh a, a nut that's on a, a bolt and that is frozen on or rusted on and what you do is you put this over it and you tighten this down and it'll break the nut off of the uh the bolt and uh i'll demonstrate that one day very nice to have craftsman um, this one here, this was cool. This is a typewriter ribbon. This is the tins they used to come in. Okay. You can see here it was Miller, uh, black and red. Uh, it was a two-tone inked ribbon, but inside it's not inked ribbon in here. Somebody had put some kind of grease or something. Can, can you smell that? It has like a, an old timey grease smell. And, uh, Man, it really smells. It smells like an old pencil. You know, like graphite smell. Anyway, so I thought that was something. I love these old tins or whatever. Again, I'm, I'm like happy as a clam. Uh, an old Hargrave, an old one. This is an old Cincinnati Tool Company Hargrave. You can tell because he's got the circle with the H. Clamp. Again, all the things I like, right? Uh, this here. This is a channel lock. Channel lock. Uh, ball peen head. Beautiful shape, right? Always love these. Not beat up. All it needs is a handle. A ball, and again, why the handles always break? Because they got that small little eye. Just amazing to me how these were designed like that. 
and uh, and then these milling bits. And let me tell you a little bit about now, these. Now, I use milling bits, but I, unfortunately, I buy the Asian ones because I, I can't afford these. Some of these bits can run $25, $30 for a bit, especially USA-made four-way cutter like this. This is a beautiful, absolutely brand new, pristine, beautiful bit here. 3 8 inch shank, high-speed steel. Uh, you see this? It's just, it's, it's nice. That alone is worth, again, the price. Here's another one. This one here is a uh, same thing. And this is the type I use most type is uh, most time when I'm cutting on the mill. So this one here is a Pratt & Whitney. This thing is crazy money. Pratt & Whitney made uh, tools for aircraft industry and stuff. And if you tried to buy this, um, a new, forget it. This thing would like $60 for something like this. Insane. That's why I always buy the Asian ones. A uh, reduced shank drill, always nice to have, in perfect shape, sharp. And then this here, a counterbore. A counterbore oh, with a Morse 2 taper. Let me show you what this is. This this is a little item here, brand new. You can see it's still got the, you got to take this off. You got to peel this off and then wipe it down. But this is a, let me show you what a pilot counterbore does. There are different types of counterbores. Some have a, a drill in the front here. This one here is called a pilot counter. It has a smooth area here, followed by a cutter here. And what that's for is mainly for bolt or washer heads. And when you drill that down, it does, this is what happens. You can do it two ways. You can, if you drill a hole for the size of the shank of the bolt that you have, like let's say you have a hole like this, but you want to bury the head, then you use what's called a counter bore. And this pilot will run against that inside hole and make an outer hole. So it will look just like that, like a step hole. And when you start machining, this is like a really big thing to have, you know, because you can't do it any other way. Um, and then if you had your bolt, you would take it like this, you press it down, and you see how nicely that goes in there, flush or whatever. And, and when you do a metal work, that's a big thing. And you can have different sizes if you want to put a washer. So when you find counter bores, especially if they're not beat up, it's a beautiful thing to have. The Morse 2 taper, you know, usually they have a drill bit at the end or a regular uh, shank, but this will fit in my machine. So this is another big money item. So there have been times I bought lots for one particular item because, uh, you know, if you went to buy that particular item by itself, it would cost $20, but there it is and a lot for $10. And the rest of the stuff is almost free. So that's where you can do well on eBay or something. So keep that in mind next time you're looking. With that, let's take a look at that channel lock uh head uh that hammerhead because they're they're not easy to find let's see what we can do with that okay so uh you can see here the kind of head shape that we have here the channel lock always had an unusually high uh cheek over here and and it uh they are nice you know especially when they're done up nice so we'll see what we can do with this but um with the small handles that they had i believe the reason they had these small handles that you don't um is because ball peen hammers traditionally are made for only striking okay and when you strike with something you don't need um although they always do break over here because people strike you know too hard they're made really to tap more or less and more than really bang like a sledgehammer would so that's why they don't have thick handles whereas if you had a carpenter hammer, like this one here, you could see a carpenter hammer has a wider, thicker handle because when you pry nails, when you get under that nail and you're prying, you need a stout handle, okay? It's not just made for banging, it's also made for prying, and, and that's why I believe that the handles are always thicker on carpenter handles compared to the thin handles that they have on a ball peen. They're just made for light tapping or you know, things like that. They're not made for whaling. However, uh, they always wind up do breaking right around here a lot of times. So what we'll do is we'll take this, clean it up and see what we can do. Okay, we uh, cleaned up the head, but a couple things I noticed. First of all, the drift, which is the hole that's in here, is off center. If you notice, this drift should be back a little bit. You see what I mean? 
You see how it's kind of in the front here? It's more on the front. It's not really properly balanced. This here should have been moved back a little bit. Again, just because it comes from a company. Now, this should have been, who knows where this came from? It could have came from a second bin. I don't know. It was never mounted. You don't know where it came from, whatever. But I'll show you what I mean when I put it onto the handle here. And I have it marked. Remember, I was marked. That's the front of the handle. I'm going to put it over here. And I fit it around just so, and I'll just give it a quick tap to show you the difference here. Look at that. Do you see what I mean? Like that handle, it uh, it's a little more in the front than it is in the back. You see what I mean? So it's not it's not going to look, you know, we can do a little bit of work with the handle to try and make it look better. But sometimes you come across these problems. So, you know, it's not every way. Some hammers, you see that? You could see how it's improperly drifted, this hammer. So, again, it will make it into a usable hammer, but... You know, you come across things like this. Now, I cut a wedge out of poplar, okay? And uh, what I did here with the handle, which I always do with my handles, this handle didn't have a cut in it, so I drilled a hole here. I put a slit up the middle, okay? So that will stop any splitting from coming down, and uh, and then we'll wedge this in and, and try and make it look halfway presentable. Now, notice how long this handle is here, okay? Notice how long it is. You see that? I don't like my handles that long on ball peens. No reason. So I will cut. <laughs> I will cut off about that much. So what do you say? Let's bang this on and mount that the best we can to make it look decent. Now, here's where we are so far. One thing I have to tell you that annoys some people is when I do this. That kills some people. Some people are like, oh, I can't believe you did that. You know, this is, um, this is for people what I call in the know. Remember those three words, in the know. And you know what I'm talking about if you made one of these. But uh, there we go. But you can see what I was talking about. About This is probably a second or something. Look at that drift hole, how it's too far. for, And it was angled the wrong way. I did everything I could to try and get this to hang straight. But uh, it's definitely <laughs> whoever drifted. This. this was a, what do they call that? A Monday or Friday hammer? I don't know. Uh, definitely whoever drifted this uh, hole did a uh, horrible job. But... We ground down the, the facets and everything. We'll pick a color to do and kept the name. Although they should be ashamed to have their name on a product like right. And we did the best we could with this. We did the top here. You can see that wedge. We put the one wedge in. Uh, that one poplar wedge I made that gave it the thickness. And then this one here just filled in the side. Pressed that in with the dake. And there we go. So now we're just going to clean up the handle. Put a little color on here and uh, we'll call this one done. Sometimes when life gives you lemons, you have to make lemonade. And we're calling this project done. Let's take a look at what we did here. First of all, we did it in a little kind of a candy green, like a pearlescent green on, on around the top and back. So that's pretty cool, right? And we did the handle up. We did it in first gun stock and then uh, some amber shellac. Did a little embellishment here, a little, just a little color on there on the handle. Something different, something just unusual, again, to practice. Um, the top came out real nice. Everything looks good. The face, I was really happy with the way the face came out on this. Just absolutely beautiful. And I'm, now, for the, those of you who are new to the channel or something, you're probably wondering, why would he cut off the handle? Uh, I did a couple videos. We even had a challenge, a short handle hammer challenge, and a lot of people made them, and they are fantastic. Now, if you're a, a mechanic and you work in a shop and you're under a lift, you might want the long handle. But other than that, anybody, most machinist, anybody in a regular home shop, you'll realize that a short handle hammer, once you have one, you start cutting. Now, I did, uh, I, did I use this all the time, this one. This one's just a little bit shorter uh, because it's a little bit heavier head. But uh, this one's about seven inches. You can see the length here of the handle. This one's about seven inches. This one here is seven and a half, a little bit more. But um, you could see that when you have a, a larger head, especially like this on a shorter handle, and you're setting driving punches, or even if you wanted to use the ball end and you're going to do some peening, you're doing a lot of tapping. You, you want a lot of control. Control is the key with a ball peen. You know, if you're swinging a longer hammer, you're not going to, your hand, hands all the way back here, you're not going to have that control, especially if you, how many times do you choke up real even close up here to get a good tap? And 
it's just a wonderful thing. So you have to try this if you have it. Now, if you have a lightweight head like this, then you want a longer handle because obviously you're not going to choke up with a little, you know, you, you want like to get some momentum out of it. But other than that, uh, you got to try this. I, I'll I put a link to the video. You know, my buddy Jimmy Campanella just made another one this weekend. Another short handle hammer. Everybody that had them loves them. I must have six or seven, but this is one I did here. And like I said, when this this when I saw that this was off center and something, I said I got to do this so I can use it. And uh, we did this one up pretty nice. It's a nice little hammer now. And uh, hope you enjoy this project. Okay, so in closing, you got to try out one of them short handle hammers. I'm sure you enjoy it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye bye.